afraid, we will rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it because our God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Praise God. Happy Thursday, everybody. It's good to be alive, man. Happy Thursday. And uh, God bless you guys. And we 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 are setting uh, our thermostat to read uh, glorious day great day full of the holy spirit full of the wisdom of god and full of the the, the very preciousness of god um this is just an awesome awesome time and uh it is it is amazing amazing to me that the power of the spirit of god has just been so ready to do great things in our lives and you know uh everybody's got issues but um you have a god that helps you through those issues and i i just believe that everything you go through helps to mature you to a whole new level um things you may look at differently uh, maybe you were really hard on one type of thing and you know um but you know it god god's really in the business of making us more like jesus in our character um and so it, it'll be well when you miss the mark get up keep going um you know don't live in regret all your life here's one thing you gotta realize whatever you have you messed up it, it's done and and you you probably can't come go back and undo it so don't ignore your past learn from it learn from it and just, just keep going now you're really going to have an opportunity to test whether or not you believe you are the righteousness of god whether or not you believe in god's grace and god's mercy it's not that you know you live this perfect life that you know when you're 50 you can brag about uh it's about knowing how to continue to make the necessary uh, course adjustments. You know, when you get off course, what you do is make a course adjustment. And when you make that course adjustment, that's because you really have faith in God and you really believe him. Uh, I, I like, uh, I think it was Hosea. I'm not sure which one who said it. They said, when I fall, I shall arise. And that should be the attitude of every believer. When you fall, get up, man. And you see you waddling all on the ground. When I fall, I shall arise. And so I want to say a quick prayer for healing. I see a lot of people going through some things in their physical body. I see people, uh, you know, who, who've got surgery scheduled for today and for tomorrow. Let's just agree right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you in total dependence complete dependence on you and we receive the finished work of healing right now we thank you lord on that cross you said it is finished and so we receive it right now and so i add my faith with those who are online with me right now and i speak to your physical body and i say to your body body line up with the word of god line up with the promises of god by which god himself will bring to pass and so right now we have faith in the faith of Jesus that we are healed right now in Jesus name. I speak to your body and I command it to be well in Jesus name. And in the name of Jesus, uh, if you're due to go on the, on the on, 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 into surgery, I pray wisdom on the doctor that he'll have skill to, to perform it well. And in the name of Jesus, whether you're healed by surgery or supernatural, we give you the glory, God. So I speak healing into the atmosphere right now. There's no time or distance in the spirit. And I thank you that wherever you are, the anointing for healing is upon you right now. And Father, we trust you. We believe you. We rely on you today. Be healed in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. Now, just thank God for that. Just thank God I'm healed. Thank God that I'm healed. Thank God that I'm healed in the name of Jesus. Praise God. You know, I've been attacking my physical body over the last couple of months, and I'm just determined that uh, I'm healed, number one. And number two, I'm just going to keep doing what I do, you know, as if I'm healed. And I am healed. So <laughs> no phone calls. I am healed, and and I, I'm thankful to God 
for the power of the Holy Spirit hitting my body and 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 bringing this thing to an end. And it is a blessing of the Lord. And so I agree with you. See what I went through uh, with shingles, uh, and that that's what it was. So you don't have to guess that that was I'd never been through anything like that before, and it's caused me to be very very sensitive to people who live with pain. Uh, it caused me to be very sensitive to people who have, who go through stuff, you know, and, um, you know, I can hear somebody saying, well, I didn't think a man of God would ever be, a, you know, be attacked in his body. What did you do wrong to be attacked in your body? You know, they said the same thing to the guy. And I think it's John nine, one, he was born blind. And he said, who did sin this man or his parents that he was born blind? And Jesus said, nobody sinned. He said, but I allowed this to happen so that my glory could be, could be seen working in them. And I'm telling you, in the name of Jesus, I add my faith with yours. Praise God. You are healed. Praise God. The manifestation come forth. Praise God. You walk yourself through that situation. Thanking God that you're healed. Praising God for what he promised and depending on God to bring every bit of it to pass in your life. I plead the blood of Jesus over your physical body. I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. I plead the blood of Jesus over anything that concerns you. And I declare that all is well in the mighty name of Jesus. And 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 the church said, amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hey, man, let's uh let's get into some confessions here this morning. And uh I know I'm just a little bit early and I want to do some confessions and I want to I want to continue to talk about how grace, you know, I, I want to probably call this grace, the teacher, grace, the teacher, because I, I, I man, to have grace teach you to, to be godly and have grace to teach you to to be righteous and have grace to teach you to be sober. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So get it out of your mouth. Go ahead and declare it. You don't have to make that happen or bring that to pass. Why? Like Abraham, you just trust God that he is able to do what he promised. Hallelujah. And God promised you healing. God, God promised that uh, the pain would be taken away from you. He promised that. So, amen. I trust God. Um, I trust the Lord Jesus Christ that what he promised, he is able to bring to pass. He is able to bring to pass. My God, I'm about to shout in here. So every time you find a promise in the Bible, remind yourself, God is able to bring it to pass. Don't you get all frustrated and um, uh, stressed out over, oh God, what do I have to do to bring to pass? Oh, I don't know if I've been good enough to bring to pass. No, 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 no. God is able to bring it to pass. He promised it. He will do it. He will make it happen. And that's why I want your, your, your focus uh, um, at today is just, just God promised it. He brings it to pass. Now uh, you might need healing in, in your finances. You know, it might be healing in your relationship. You, you might need healing in your physical body. We were specifically talking about physical body because I just felt led to pray for everybody and their health. But uh, I pray for the health of your marriage. I pray for the health of your relationships. I pray for the health of your provisions. But God, God said, I will supply all your need according to his riches and glory through and by Christ Jesus. And I believe he does that so we can give him the glory so we can continue to thank him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I feel a little something in here. Praise God. Hallelujah. God is the mighty healer and he is healing and, and causing things to happen in your life. Somebody might need to, you know, you might be going through a healing in your emotions. Man, it's been a tough time the last two years or so. It's been rough, but God's healing your emotions. God is healing everything that concerning concerns you. He is perfecting everything that concerns you. Glory be to God. My God is a good God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I think somebody ought to just put a little thing up there and say, Lord, I thank you. Hallelujah. Just go and praise him a little bit, man. He is worthy 
to be praised. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, my God is worthy to be praised. I feel a little hoop trying to creep up in my voice. I am grateful and thankful to my Lord God. He is almighty. He is well able to do exceedingly abundantly above all you can ask or think in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right. So I, I didn't preach to you. Glory be to God. And, 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 and I ain't finished. Let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. And, uh, you know, maybe what we ought to do is just make some uh, declarations uh, today uh, where God's medicine is concerned and just declare some things where your healing is concerned. And let's just go ahead and do that. So uh, let's call this Healing Thursday. Amen. Healing Thursday. And then we'll talk a little bit about how grace will teach us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's go ahead and declare Psalms 91. Ready? I declare that I will dwell in the shelter of the Most High God. I declare that I will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I declare that God is my refuge and my fortress. I declare that you are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. I declare that God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I declare that I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. I declare that God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I declare that I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I declare that I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness nor any disaster that strikes at midday. I declare that because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home, no evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. I declare that God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. I declare that God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Glory be to God. I declare, come on somebody. That's a powerful thing to be able to declare something and believe you receive it. Amen. I declare that because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. I declare that he will reward me with long life. And he will show me his salvation. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise God. God is good all the time. Let's make some declarations where your healing is concerned. You ready? Jesus is the Lord of my life. Sickness, sickness and disease have no power over me. I am forgiven and free from sin and guilt. I am dead to sin and I'm alive under righteousness. I am free from unforgiveness and strife. I forgive others as Christ has forgiven me. For the love of God is shed abroad in my heart by the Holy Ghost. Jesus bore my sins in his body and on the tree. Therefore, I'm dead to sin and alive unto God. And by his stripes, I am healed and made whole. Jesus bore my sickness and carried my pain. Therefore, I give no place to sickness or pain. For God sent his word and healed me. Father, 
because of your word, I am an overcomer. I overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil by the blood of the lamb and the word of my testimony. You have given me abundant life. I receive that life through your word and it flows to every organ of my body, bringing healing and health. Heavenly Father, I attend to your word. I incline my ears to your sayings. I will not let them depart from my eyes. I keep them in the midst of my heart, for they are life and healing to all my flesh. And as God was with Moses, so is he with me. My eyes are not dim, neither are my natural forces abated. Blessed are my eyes, for they see, and my ears, for they hear. No evil will befall me, neither shall any plague come near my dwelling. For you have given your angels charge over me. They keep me in all my ways, and in my pathway is life, healing, and health. Jesus took my inform in my infirmities and bore my sickness. Therefore, I refuse to allow sickness to dominate my body. The life of God flows within me, bringing healing to every fiber of my being. Glory. I'm redeemed from the curse. Galatians 3.13 is flowing in my bloodstream. It flows every cell of my body, restoring life and health. The life of 1 Peter 2.24 is a reality in my flesh, restoring every cell of my body. I present my body to God, for it is the temple of the living God. God dwells in me, and his life permeates my spirit, my soul, and my body, so that I am filled with the fullness of God every day. My body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. I make a demand on my body to release the right chemicals. My body is in perfect chemical balance. My pancreas secretes the proper amount of insulin for life and health. Heavenly Father, through your word, you have imparted your life to me. That life restores my body with every breath I breathe and every word I speak. That which God has not planted is dissolved and rooted out of my body in the name of Jesus. 1 Peter 2, 24 is engrafted into every fiber of my being and I am alive with the life of God in Jesus' name. Ooh, that ought to get you stirred up, man. That ought to get you stirred up. Just declare right now, I am healed. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. All right, let's spend the rest of this time, just a few minutes. If you'll go to um, the book of Titus, and in Titus, we want to look at those scriptures again to show you about what the Bible says about grace being a teacher. Grace teaches us, all right? Titus chapter 2, verse 11 he says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. So this grace has been made available to the whole world, every man that's on the planet. And uh, how do you get it? You, you, you know, Jesus is full of grace and truth. So Jesus and, and grace, when you accept Jesus and believe him, you've accepted and believe that grace. And he says it's available to everybody that believes. So just because it's available doesn't mean everybody believes it, doesn't, doesn't mean everybody receives it. Verse 12, this grace teaches us. So grace teaches us, us who? Those, us who believe, us who have received him. Grace teaches us. What does he teach us? That denying or refusing ungodliness and worldly lusts, man, that's powerful. Grace will teach you how to deny and refuse ungodliness and worldly lusts. And then he says, and grace will teach you how to live soberly, righteously, godly. And now a godly life is a life where you're in complete dependence upon God. And grace will teach you how to live a life that's complete 
uh, that's in, that's involved in complete dependence upon God in this present world. And he says, while grace is teaching you, you look for that verse 13. You look for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Man, I got to shouting over that on the way home from Bible study last night. Just thinking about the return of the Lord. You know, I was singing this song with Walter Hawkins and and the Love Center Choir. And they, they were talking about I'm going away and you'll look for me and I'll be gone. I'm going up to glory while I sing and shout. There'll be nobody there to put me out. My God, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the return of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible says to do that to do that, to live every day of your life in expectation of the return of Jesus Christ. Now, I want to make this comment. I want you to listen to me and, and, and really grab hold of what I'm saying here. Um, the truth that the grace of God, the very grace, the same grace which brings salvation, also teaches those who are saved how to live pleasing to God. So the very grace that that brings salvation is the very grace that teaches us who are now saved because we believe God. It teaches us how to live pleasing unto God. Now, it seems like, you know, we've missed the entire picture here where this grace is concerned. You know, people say, well, they call it greasy grace and and then they say, well, got to be careful because that grace will be responsible for you living a loose life. No, grace is what's going to teach you how to live life according to true Christian conduct. And now listen to this. The person who says, I believe in grace, but I do not think that it should be emphasized too much because that leads to careless living. Well, that person has failed to understand God's work of grace on behalf of all he all that God has done by grace and how he has saved us from the wrath of God. You know, the Bible says in second Peter chapter three and 18, he says we should grow in grace. Growth in spiritual life comes only by the grace of God. And I know you're convinced that it comes by your self effort, but it, it comes only by the grace of God. Peter admonishes in second Peter chapter three, 18, grow in grace well i allow grace to teach me and as i allow that to happen i begin to grow in that there, there, there really is a a tremendous need for a fuller presentation of the grace of god like i said it's like an onion and you just take layers off and it, you, you know you, you you don't you don't peel the whole onion you just kind of take layers off you follow what i'm saying um not only of the truth that salvation from condemnation is to, is entirely of grace. Salvation from condemnation totally by the grace of God. I don't even know any other way you can get delivered from that condemnation without the grace of God. But even more the the truth that 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 the very same grace which brings salvation it teaches the saved how to live godly in this present world. Grace will teach you how to live in complete dependence upon God. Now, that's that's the whole I'm, I'm trying to show our church right now that the whole context of the Bible is learning, allowing grace to teach you how to be in complete dependence upon God. And Satan shows in and what he wants to do is he wants you to declare your independence from God. In other words, he wants you to recognize yourself as. Um, someone you can depend on and then through self-effort and all the things you do to try to get done what only God can get done and so there is a false idea a, and it's a, it's a very prevalent one that God's law teaches men how to live godly lives we got this thing about the law is what teaches me how to live godly lives no it does not grace teaches you how to live godly life not one man has learned godliness by the precepts of the law. Not one. And I could, if I had time, go through the scriptures, Romans chapter 3, 19 through 20, Galatians chapter 3, verse 19, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, 56, 1 Timothy chapter 1 and 9, Hebrews chapter 2, 14. It's all in the script. Not one man has ever learned godliness 
through the law because the law uh, is based in self-effort. You don't need faith to live by the law of Moses. Why? You do it, you get blessed. You don't do it, you get cursed. That's, it's just that simple. And so um, we have to kind of dig into some teaching and to gain some understanding on, you know, how grace the teacher uh, works in our life and, and how we should uh, yield ourselves to allow grace to teach us. Um, yeah, this is pretty strong. This is, this is a lot of stuff. And so you can see what, what we're trying to get in just in the little time that we have, uh, and you know, we ain't going nowhere. I mean, I don't know when Jesus is coming back and you don't know when he's coming back either. I know we're going to be ready when he come back, but I, I want grace to teach me. And I'm, I'm, I'm learning so much and I'm, I'm understanding that as I go down this uh, path and this journey of complete dependence upon God, uh, dude, it's, it's, it's been a powerful journey and I'm seeing things I've never seen before. I'm, I'm kind of checking out stuff and uh, reevaluating what I used to think about this and, and, and grace is beginning to teach me. And so uh, somebody says, well, I really want grace to teach me. Well, get in it, man. You know, go and log in and, 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 and go through the Grace Life Academy. Uh, go on uh, the, the YouTube and get the all get all the, uh, you know, go to the channel, the YouTube channel and just start listening to all these teachings on the gospel. Just just start doing it. Just maybe take a day uh, and, and just go and and listen to as many as you can or make it a part of your time you spend with God. I mean, I'm, I'm not pulling any of these teachings down. I don't care for 3000 of them get on the channel. I just want it to be there for you. So you can take yourself through the teachings of grace and, you know, you can listen to a message one time and then go listen to it again and hear something you didn't even hear the first time. And I think as you become students of grace, you'll begin to understand how grace can teach you. And you'll begin to also understand that you have really, really been in a, been in a way. I mean, you, you, you probably you are probably we are probably the big, biggest hindrance to our growth. And uh, I think God wants to to show us how to do that. Anyway, uh, I'm going to let you guys go today. Uh, I'm excited. This is going to be a really good day today. And uh, all is well with you. You're healed. You are healed. Praise God. You are healed in the mighty name of Jesus. I love you guys. Have an amazing.